Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Renee Doliol, the Recruitment and Enrollment Manager for Trellis. Trellis is a brand new, exciting college hybrid program that allows people to earn an affordable, flexible college degree in an accelerated format that is very affordable and will, students will also receive exceptional student support services because those student support services are located right here in the city of New Orleans. We're located downtown at 1555 Poydras Avenue. Students receive um, coaching all the way from enrollment support, which looks like um, admissions and financial aid support, to academic support with our college completion advisor, as well as career support with our, co with our career coach that will uh, stay with you even after you graduate. Um, students on average who are earning associate degree, uh, associate degree programs through our um, college hybrid model can earn a degree in 12 to 18 months and can earn a bachelor's degree in a little uh, around three years. Um, we do have a number of programs that are available. I do see that we have one of our students who, uh, who is a currently enrolled student who is on our, um, our meetup event tonight. The purpose of this industry meetup is to give citizens of New Orleans an opportunity to meet professionals in various industries that can give them insight into their own personal educational and professional journeys. Hoping um, that with that, they will create opportunities for networking, as well as figure out if earning a degree through Trellis will allow them to be able to pursue those career goals and those professional goals as well. So we do have a number of pr um, professionals that are on tonight that are in the industry of entrepreneurship. We have four great professionals who are business owners in their own right, who have degrees in various areas. So they have different journeys um, that have all led them to where they are right now. And I think it's really beneficial for them to be able to share their stories, their insight, as well as offer advice to people who are looking to get into their own businesses as well. So I do have my colleague, Logan Perkins, who is our career coach who is on tonight as well and he will be partnering with me today to um, get through all of our questions um, and he is going to be giving you a little bit of an introduction of our professionals. Logan? All right, so uh, just bear with me while I introduce everybody but uh, first off we have Dr. Devante Williford. Um, he is the lead photographer of uh, Rare Sighting uh, Photography. He's also the owner of that business. Uh, we have Pauline Storms Perkins, who's the owner of Storms to Kids Services. She also dabbles in real estate and is a filmmaker. Uh, we have Keosha Griffith, who's the owner of OSHA's Kitchen. And we have Rayon Ramsey, who's the owner of Young Stars NOLA. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again for taking the time out to speak with our students and maybe even prospective students and those who are just joining us just to get perspective as well. Now, what we want to do is give each one of our professionals a bit of time to give their background. So, um, guys, if you don't mind, share with us, you know, where you're from, what you majored in in college, um, your professional journey, like a, a, a brief uh, journey of your professional life, and how you ended up deciding to start your own companies, start your own businesses, and what your passion is. Um, so we'll start with Kiosha. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Kiosha Griffiths. I, uh, unlike everyone, I think on this call, I hail from the sunny shores of uh, California. So I was born and raised in Southern California, um, and I have tumbled my way through the United States. Um, I got my undergraduate degree in communications at California State University, Monterey Bay, which is in Northern California. After that, kind of was like, California's cool, but I'm going to move to Texas. Uh, moved to San Antonio where I got my master's degree in higher education um, and then was like, Texas is cool, but I'm going to move to New York. Uh, so I moved to upstate New York. I, it really wasn't that thought process, but that's kind of like how I'm going to say it. Um, I moved to upstate New York where I served as a resident director at a, at a at the public Ivy of New York um, is what we will call it, Binghamton University. Um, and I was there for about two and a half years and I really loved res life. Um, but then after a while, it was like, that's cool. But what else is next? Um, at the same time, my brother uh, met his wife while he was here in New Orleans. They had a baby. I came to visit. I fell in love with her. Boom, I moved down here um, after getting a job at the at University of New Orleans. Um, where I was a, fir a first year student success counselor. Um, 
after moving to New Orleans and kind of like being like, yes, this is a life. I really enjoyed it. Um, everything at UNO was cool, but then eventually ended up at the Cowan Institute as the first college completion advisor um, for the Trellis program. Um, what started me to, what caused me or motivated me to start OSHA's Kitchen um, was, I guess, to just increase my own pockets. Um, I, when I lived in Binghamton, I did not have to pay rent. Um, so moving here and having to get real bills, I was like, man, what am I going to do? Um, and I was telling my mother, I'm, I'm going to join Uber and drive Uber or Lyft. And she was like, nah, you bake turn your hobby into a hustle. And I was like, you are right, mom. Okay. Uh, growing up in our house, we, everything was handmade. We only cookies in our house that ever existed were Oreos. Um, so cookies, cakes, breads, pies, all of that was handmade by my mother, of course. Um, so then I started OSHA's Kitchen in October of 2008, 2018, um, just on a whim, just selling like baked breads and pound cakes and then moved up to cookies and brownies and pound more pound cakes and rounded cakes um and then have now just kind of do my nine to five and then when i get home or like on the weekend um fully immersed in osha's kitchen um and out of osha's kitchen also is a first generation um college student book fund um so while i wanted to give back to the community in some way um wanted to give back in a way that meant something to me as a first generation student um so we also have the proceeds of baking um, goes towards that book fund. And last year, our, our first year with the book fund, we gave away five um, book funds to five students throughout the United States. So my goal, our goal this year is to give out seven um, per the year. Um, and OSHA's is solely manned by me. I don't let anybody else baking because I'm, I'm, I'm that person in the kitchen where I'm like, what are you doing? Um, and I don't want anybody to mess up what I do. So that is me. That is OSHA. Um, and yeah. Thanks, Kiosha. Thanks. Um, I pressed the, the space bar and it just didn't work. Um, I'm going to be introducing you guys by how you are on my screen. So next is Rayon Ramsey. Hi, guys. So my name is Rayon and like she said, my name is Rayon Ramsey. I am a proud graduate of Diller University. <laughs> <laughs> Class of 2013. <laughs> um, so basically, um, I can just kind of start from midway to my life. Uh, Katrina happened when I was 15, which um, then me and my mom and my family, we moved to Arlington, Texas. Moved to Arlington, I was kind of introduced to a different style of music out there, which kind of led me back here to come to school at Dillard to a major in vocal performance. Major in vocal performance, loved it. Um, I had some amazing experience, uh, the discipline, just the technique, just who I am today comes from Diller University, just my discipline. So graduated in 2013, I started taking on a job towards the end of the year of 2013, basically um, volunteering while I was teaching a choir at a school. Then they, they hired me. I was only there for like two years and then I was fired from the job, unfortunately. So here we are when I was fired, I was probably fired in August of 2015. And then September of 2015, I opened my business. And one thing I um, realized while I was in school was while I was teaching in school is that the lack thereof of kids who, um, who are interested in the performing arts, like, they really don't have that outlet in school. So while I was teaching before I knew I was going, before I was even fired, uh, I was like, you know, I want to do something outside of the school. So lo and behold, I was fired. And here come like a month later, not even a month, maybe like three weeks. My um, my cousins have a spot uptown that they wasn't that 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 they weren't using, and it just kind of like it it just felt like it was meant to be, you know, like it just fell in my lap, like it just. Here's the spot, you know, you can pay little to nothing. We are here with you. You can do whatever you need to do. So Young Stars of NOLA is a performing arts organization for kids with and without disabilities. And we are, we'll be five in September. It's so crazy. It's so amazing. Um, we, we became a nonprofit at one when we were one and a half. And I just feel like 
one thing that I can say about two upcoming entrepreneurs and who's ever in school, I feel like learn everything that you need to learn in school so you can do what you need to do to have a, to run a successful business. Not everything that you um, learn from school, you would need to have a business, but at least you would know the technicalities of it. You know, I was a performing arts major. I didn't learn business. My electives were, uh, my general electives were psychology. I love psychology, y'all. But I wasn't really into business. So the one thing I did, I had people who helped me um, understand the business, understand things are black and white in business. As creative, sometimes we are not black and white. We are all over the place, you know? So one thing I learned was um, black and white, the business and how to run a business and also be creative in the business. And yeah, it's five years old. And I feel like in the next five years, I just see young stars being in a bigger facility and, you know, just um, servicing inner city kids, the kids who are known as the underdogs, the kids who people won't um, even look to because of their, um, you know, because of where they come from or the lack of resources they had, you know. So I'm just in the business of merging a gap and trying to turn dreams into realities for our little babies. <laughs> And I've heard them perform so many times. She has amazing kids that she works with. They are amazing and super talented. Thank you, Rayan. Um, next, we have Devontae Williford. Greetings, everybody. My name is Dr. Devontae Williford. And no, 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 that's not for you. Uh, it's for me. Um, uh, over the last couple of years, uh, people have been uh, kind of telling me like, hey, you need to do that. You need to say that because you earn that. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. I did. I did earn that, you know? Um, and so I've been kind of owning that. Uh, but anyway, Dr. Devante Rashad Williford. Um, I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I got down here to the gorgeous, captivating, beautiful city of New Orleans just uh, before Hurricane Katrina, a couple weeks before. Um, and like I said, shared with you guys earlier, Logan was actually uh, my college roommate for a spell. Um, but anyway, um, initially I had dreams of becoming an anesthesiologist. Um, <laughs> the guy's being weird. <laughs> uh, initially I had dreams of becoming an anesthesiologist coming from Chicago. Um, and that stemmed from me breaking my wrist in eighth grade. I dumped the basketball. I'm only 5'9", but I dumped before, right? So I was like a lot of pounds lighter than this. Anyway, I dumped the ball and I fell and I broke my wrist, boom. And then I had a full anesthesiologist and I was like, I'm gonna be just like you when I grew up. Got to Xavier and uh, realized that, hey, anesthesiology is, might not be for me because it's gonna take a tremendous amount of time that I am not prepared to uh, sacrifice. So I would have had to do, had to do uh, undergrad and medical school and residency and all that. And I was like, nope, I ain't got time. <laughs> and uh, one of the beautiful things is my freshman year at Xavier, uh, my roommate, Michael Wynn Jr., um, who would become my frat brother, um, was in pharmacy school at the time. So I had a good glimpse of pharmacy school right kind of when I got there. And um, as I matriculated uh, through two years, kind of got a really good glimpse because Xavier had a pharmacy school right there on campus. So that became a major. Um, I practiced from, I graduated in uh, 2013. I practiced from 2013 through March of 2019, full-time through 2018, and then part-time from March of 18 to March of 19. I started my business, uh, Rare Sighting Photography, in January of 2016. Um, originally, I started taking photographs. I call it like 2010-ish. Uh, Instagram kind of came out in 2010. Um, that's when I started, you know, really like being intentional about, you know, the photographs that I was taking, the editing and all that good stuff. Um, 2012, it got kind of heavy, heavy in the iPhoneography. Like it was a big deal. Like people were looking at my iPhone photos like, bro, like this is not um, a phone. And I was, you know, um, I took wedding photos that are still on Facebook to this day that are better than some people's, according to them, probably and myself, better than their wedding photographer's photos, uh, but captured with my iPhone 5 or 6 or something like that, edited with Instagram, right? Um, but there were very intentional photos, um, and they still have them uploaded on Facebook uh, to this day. So 
Um, and I'm very uh, mindful about telling people about my transition and my experience because it's unique. And one of the big pitfalls, and we might get to this a little bit later, that uh, people get into, uh, particularly uh, creatives, uh, just because you're good doesn't mean you need to jump, right? Um, so I'm very mindful about telling people, hey, I was a pharmacist, meaning I made over 100 grand, right, um, for a lot of years, right? Um, and also a very big uh, thing was that I worked seven on seven off for about four and a half years. So I had my time. I had the money and the time to invest in myself. And that's a big deal. Um, I'm very mindful about telling people, hey, you need to stay in that job role until it's time to transition. Don't just do it because you're good or you're passionate. That's not enough. You still need to have, you need to be able to pay your bills and this and the other. And uh, the fact of the matter is, I was able to save 40% of my income for several years, right? And I had that, that, uh, that, that seven on, seven on, seven off uh, situation. So I had a ton of time. So my, my situation is very unique and I'm always very upfront about sharing that with people. And, you know, one of the other things that I do outside of the photography is like, you know, mentoring and business coaching so that I can help people navigate a lot of the pitfalls that I went through. And a lot of the pitfalls that I went through, I was able to easily navigate because I had the money <laughs> to navigate them, right? And a lot of people don't. So I'm here to save people time and money based on the experiences that I had, uh, matriculating from pharmacy to full-time photography plus other stuff. Thank you so much, Dr. Williford. We're going to make sure that we put that doctor on there, make sure we get that handle because you've earned that and we want to make sure that we acknowledge that. Um, and last but not least, we have Pauline Sequoia Storms Perkin. So, hey, everybody. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you um, Zoom next to your husband. My bad. Okay, so I'm Sequoia, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Thank you guys for allowing me to speak um, on tonight's like panel. Um, I'm from Cincinnati, I'm with the Xavier. Uh, came to Xavier in 2006 and graduated in 2011. My major was mass communications, uh, TV production. So after I graduated from Xavier, I started working in film. Um, like I had a job interview out in the NAA. I had wanted some sort of scholarship and they had interviewed, like they had received 2000 applicants, applications, and then they only picked 75. And I was flown out to LA to work, to do a interview with Disney. And I got up there and I was the realest interview I ever had in my life, y'all. I sat there and I was, I walked up on that, um, that lot and it was like the doors were holding up the buildings and it was big old squirrel smiling at me. And I was like, oh my God, where am I? So I do this interview and it was the craziest interview I've ever had in my life. Um, to say all this, I didn't get that job, but I didn't get that job. And a week later, I had worked on a golf course during college and um, I met the golfers, they just held me down. They were like, uh, I got a brother who works in film. And another guy was like, I have a friend who works in film. We're going to help you. So after I didn't get that job in ABC, which I thought was going to be a dream job, I started working in film immediately, probably like a month and a half after I graduated on um, feature films. So I've been working in film ever since 2009. No, when did I graduate? 2011. Um, up until this day, to this day, I mean, due to the pandemic, there ain't no movies popping off for real, for real, but that's what I really do. I probably say like six months out of the year. Um, in 2016, I was working on this movie for Lifetime. It was a movie from hell. And I remember sitting in the office and I probably would have finished crying because it was such a terrible movie. I was in one position and then they were like, hey, we're going to drop you to this position. So technically, I guess I got fired. Well, I didn't get fired, I got demoted. <laughs> and then I was sitting there, I was like, Jesus, get me off of this terrible movie. It was like a lifetime girl from Compton or something, Dr. Dre's wife getting beat up. Look so hard though. Um, so, and I just sat there and I remember my homegirl who was the head of another department. I work in production. So I'm a production coordinator, Local 161 is my union, um, which is the engine of the movie. We help everything to go. Like literally a movie cannot be done without a production coordinator. Cause it's like, I have to be there in order to organize everything. So my homegirl came in and she was like, um, a locations manager, she secures every location spot that a film 
um, shoots at. She's like, hey, you know who's somebody who wants to make some money watching some equipment? And when she said that, I said, I sure do. I said, I got five brothers. What you, where you need us at? Where you need us at? And so from that point, I started a security company. And it all came out of um, a terrible opportunity, a terrible job. I said, God must have had greater because, you know, I had a wedding to play for. But I, it was more so I, my brothers needed a job. And I had enough brothers and I was like, Lord, I want to be able to provide for them. I want this to happen. So it was never, I want to get rich. It was more so like my Lord, we need some money up in this family. So from that show, I birthed Storm Secure Services. And she was like, Storm Security. And I was like, Storm Secure Services. So I LLC that sucker. I got bonded insured. I don't even I could barely count y'all. I gave her mass communication TV production. But I was like, let me try to find, I don't have a business background. So I was like, let me try to figure out how to get a security company bonded, employees, W not W2s, workers' compensation, making sure the right taxes are taken out. Like, that is all how this happened. I went from having my two brothers working on my film up to 30. I worked some movie last year with Netflix. I had 15 people going 24 hours for three weeks. And I was the biggest job I ever had. And I said, I never, ever dreamt of opening a business. Like, I never dreamt of it. And it was all, I guess, I always say this, I always say, by the grace of God, because he knew like what was on my spirit and what what I needed, what we needed. And so since then, we've grown, we worked larger movies. I, we've done every single movie that has come into the greater Cincinnati area um, since 2016. So you guys wouldn't know this, but there have been like major Netflix shows that have come through and they always call, they're like, you guys are the go-tos. And I'm like, listen, we go to the hood, we don't play them games with them people. We're very trained. And it's a lot of my family. It's a lot of retired people and they're all qualified. Like it is just, it's really blossom. It's really, really blossom. And this year, um, even with the pandemic and me having some downtime, I was able to do the things I needed to do. Like I need to go through the, get all my people, uh, go through the state process and revamping my website and getting a security card because I got a grant. So I was like, I'm just trying to build and see where God wants to take this. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much. So for our guests who are on here, you can see from our professionals introductions, they are really, really qualified to talk to you about entrepreneurship. Some of them, I know one in particular, Rayan, actually majored in what she's doing right now, business-wise, but the other three, you can see that their majors were totally different from what they're actually doing right now, business-wise. Um, and so what we're going to do right now is we're going to ask some series of questions and we're going to allow, allow our um, professionals to answer them now. One or all of you can answer. Um, and if our guests, if you think of any questions as we talk, please feel free to drop them in the chat um, um, so we can ask those questions as well. Um, so to get started, the first question that we have is, um, what strengths do you think are important for someone interested in entrepreneurship? I'll uh, tackle that first, and then if anybody else wants to chime in, um, discipline is absolutely paramount. Talent is cool. It's cool. It'll get you good at what you do. Discipline is the difference maker. I think I tweet that and put that on Facebook uh, at least uh, three times a month. But discipline is the difference maker because the reality is in uh, the game or the life, the lifestyle of entrepreneurship, there's no boss. There's nobody to motivate you besides yourself. You have to be a self-motivator and you have to be disciplined and you have to, you know, I, I was never a morning person until I was an entrepreneur. Now I wake up between four and 6 a.m. because I got to get it. And it's not that I even have to get it. It's I want to get it. I've never wanted to get it so bad in my life until I was getting it for myself. <laughs> so yeah, discipline is the difference maker. I think discipline and also character skills, who you are as an individual. Also, um, when, I, um, when I became a business owner now, I have to move different because Young Stars, it lies on me. So if Young the make and break is at my feet, you know, it's, it's mine. So I can't blame this on anyone. So that means your networking skills, your socialization skills. If you are introverted, you may have to step out of that to meet people because sometimes if you cross connect, sometimes that will help you in more ways than connecting up. Like 
people that you meet, like right here, I want to link up with everyone afterwards because we all make and help someone, we help each other, you know? It's just, you have to kind of step out of yourself to say, you know what, I'm going to attend this event. I'm going to attend this networking event. I'm going to meet some people, you know, I'm going to become social because the only way they'll know about your business is through you in the beginning stages, you know? So you have to step out of yourself if you're shy, if you are an introvert. I say discipline, socialization skills, and character. You have to be really, a, you have to be good at your, in your heart if you want to be an entrepreneur. Because you, you're going to need a lot of people to support you. You know, in order for this to work, you're going to have to have people, clients, and customers. And people are not going to buy into something that they feel is not right. So you have to be right as an individual. Mm -hmm. I would second what Devante has said, as well as Rayon. I would just say to add on to those is, um, would be adaptability, to be able to adapt to any situation in any circumstance. There have been times where I just was like, what am I doing? And how did I get here? But it was like, you can't, you can't give up and you can't be like, I'm gonna quit today. Although many times I think I was like, I'm, we gonna quit this show. My brother was like, no, we need to keep moving forward. So just being able to adapt to any, any and all circumstances. And holding your ground. We'll try it. Mm -hmm. Try Jesus, not me. Because <laughs> so, I throw hands, not to my clients, but I throw hands. <laughs> I would agree with everyone. I would also say perseverance um, and determination because not everyone is going to buy into your dream. And if you, a doctor over here out here flexing, uh, but if perseverance, it's a, perse it's a perseverance tattoo. You said it, and I, yeah, I tatted it some years ago. Perseverance, it's on me, baby. <laughs> uh, so perseverance and determination. If you don't buy into your dream, no one else is going to buy into it. And then also, not everybody is going to see what you see. Um, not everybody likes cookies. Not everybody wants their pictures taken. Not everyone's going to see into it. Just because one person says no doesn't mean the next person's not going to say no. Um, and, and while my business is more of like a, a side business, I do also live, breathe everything. Um, and I'm just determined as well, right? So at work, I mention it, in personal life, um, because I am my business. And if I'm just like, yeah, it's something I do on the side, people are going to be like, oh, it's all right, that's cool. Um, and not take it as serious. Um, so it's also that, um, but in addition to what everyone else also said. And I wanted to chime in. I loved the way you ended that, uh, Kiyosha. Um, you said something along the lines of little business. Like there's a power, there's power in words. There's power in naming, right? This is not a little business. In fact, when people said, oh, you still doing your little, no, this is not a little photography thing. This is a big ass photography thing, actually. This is a sustainable business. I left pharmacy for this. I'm good. Okay. So this is, there's nothing little about this. It's substantial. Right. It's That's significant. Right. So yeah. Oh there's yeah. Power. I don't refer to Kiosha. I don't refer to OSHAs as OSHAs. Like people, it's, it's me. Like there's Kiosha and there's OSHAs. And someone's like, why do you refer as OSHAs as something separate? I'm like, because she is something separate. Like it's a whole, it's a whole thing. It is a whole business. It is a dream. It is a mission. It's something I live for. Why would I just refer to it as something little? Mm -hmm. Nope, nope. Plus I pay taxes on her, so. I heard someone say, this little business is gonna be a million dollar business. Come on now. <laughs> I know it's Bible study tonight. Oh, okay, we're gonna claim that one. <laughs> I already got those aspirations of $250,000 within a couple years. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. Uh -uh, can't nobody hear you. Did anybody else want to jump in before I jump to the next question? All right. So the next question is, what was your key driving force behind becoming an entrepreneur? I like Say one more time, Logan. One more time. The question. Yeah. So, what was your key driving force behind becoming an entrepreneur? Um, I have to say, my key driving force behind Storm Security Services was my family. I wanted to be able to see 
one thing about it, um, I'm a first generation college student and I know that we need to be able to, they say that nobody makes until we all make it. And one thing about it was I can't pay everybody bills. I, I can't, I can't do that. So I was like, if I'm able to provide a way for them to be able to um, be self-sufficient, that, that puts more money in my pockets. So it was always my, my family behind me. And then at the same time, I would look back and I would be like, do I really want to spend 30 years doing 17 hour days? Like it, it people want to hear, like they say like, oh, you work in movies and film. And I sit there and I'm like, I'm going, I'm looking real, I'm aging fast out here. Cause this is stressful. It's very stressful. So, um, I wanted to be able to have other streams of income, my family and having other streams of income. I'll chime in real quick. Um, it was because I knew I was meant to be more. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, I, I heard this and I remember this one particular thing when I first started my business, maybe a, within a year of my business, someone anonymously uh, said on Facebook and then they uh, deactivated their account. Um, it said, you niggers should have been you, you should have been happy with pharmacy. And even doctorship is not enough for me. I knew I was meant to be more. Um, and that's that's still a, a part of me, a significant part of me. And I do have, just as an aside, I have all those aspirations of a nonprofit that I'm kind of working on now to give away this doctor brain to my community and uh, get some government funding to do that. Because um, I, I love what I do. I love the people aspect of it. I just happen to not really like the insurance company, drug company side of things. It's a little immoral. But anyway, uh, the morality of pharmacy, I actually am, am enamored with. I'm in love with uh, helping people in that way. Um, but I knew there was more for me. And I knew the more for me was outside of the corporate structure because it literally, you know, puts you in a box. Um, I go to Walgreens. I stand there for X amount of time. I, just, my brother, I, I stand there for X amount of time. I only can operate in this capacity, right? And even if I move up, the upward mobility is still within this little small box of a system. The system itself is small to me, right? So just going from pharmacist to pharmacy manager, to pharmacy supervisor to this, that, and the other, I'm still a little person in this, in this one of the zillions of companies. No, I'm bigger than that. I'm, I'm you know, bigger than that. And so I knew uh, my, 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 my reach was, bigger than just uh, pharmacy in the retail capacity, so. I actually feel like um, once I graduated from college, I, I didn't want to be a business owner. That, that just wasn't in my mind, you know? But like, when you understand when you're a singer and you, as a singer, I just feel like we need multiple streams of income. And at that time graduating, I didn't have that idea. All I know, I wanted to sing all over the world. I don't know. I didn't know how the money was going to come. I didn't know if the opportunity was going to come ASAP, you know, and of course, like you have to kind of grow in your craft. You have to go through the process of your craft of being who you are called to be. I just feel like God placed young stars in my heart. Like it wasn't something that I planned, but almost saying, okay, here's your gift, but here are different streams that, you know, you can utilize your gift to make different um, streams of income. And also, I just want to create generational wealth, you know? I want to bless people who are, I want to be a blessing to people. I want to be a blessing to my parents. <clears throat> Excuse me, I feel like my parents provided such an amazing life for me and I feel like I need to do just as much for them and my kids and you know, it's just generational wealth that I am really about. And I just want to make a difference because I see in our city, I remember saying, I want the young stars of NOLA, I want the young stars of Atlanta, I want the young stars of Detroit, I want the young stars here, here. And then I was thinking this year, I was like, no, I'm going to capitalize on my city. It's going to be a young stars of NOLA, and we're going to get these babies the best opportunities that they can, because some of them, you know, they have the talent, they have the character, they just don't have the resources. So as I'm pursuing, I'm going to help them pursue. Mm-hmm. He gonna bless you real good, girl. <laughs> Logan, you need to bring Pauline to work when we go back to office because she is, she's funny. I like her. Um, I forgot the question, but I'm assuming it is what made us want to start our business. Okay, cool. 
Um, as I said, I wanted to start just in the sense of I needed another stream of income. But then as I started OSHA's, I was like, these cookies are actually pretty good. Um, and I started to believe in myself. And when I was getting orders, I'm just like, people are really out here just ordering? I'm like, okay. And just like taking off. And while I am local, I'm all like people all across the country. All right now, I think I'm up to 30 states have ordered um, OSHA's kitchens. And it's just like more and more. And I'm just like, all right. So it's not necessarily like I want to start. I wanted to start a business and my Facebook reminded me many, many moons ago that I wanted to start a cupcake pop-up shop. I was like, I just want to do a cupcake pop-up shop. And then I started Oceans instead a year later. And I was like, all right, okay, this works. So I think for me, it's just like having something else, um, like Dr. Devante said, having something else I knew was meant for more. And just like, I love working in education. I love it. I love working with students and I love that access and connecting them. Um, but then I also really enjoy baking and that's where my scholarship also comes in of like, I'm tying the two, my two worlds together. Would I want one day want to open OSHA's kitchen and have a storefront and all that good stuff? We'll get there. I don't, don't see it in my future because to me, baking is more stress relieving. Um, but maybe one day I might get a little like Saturday shop or something. It is in my dreams. It is in my future. Um, but we just haven't got to start pinning those plans or talking to God about it yet, but I know it's there. Thank you guys so much. Um, another question is when you are operating in your business, what does a typical day look like for you? I'll, I'll go on this one. Um, a lot of times I am, I am simultaneously working. So I'll be working a film and then there will be a security where my mom is the manager up in Cincinnati. And so we do a text chain. So if we have multiple people, I'll be at my job and they'll probably be thinking I'm doing their work, but I'll be sitting there going over the production report, which has to get to the accountant by 7.30. Um, and I will be texting, sending messages out, um, making sure everything is okay. There isn't any need. Um, and sometimes there is a need. Sometimes I just sneak off, but it, it's more so making sure that everything is in order for that day and everything is covered because... The communication has to be clear. And because I work on the inside, I always have the information or I can always hear when things are about to switch. That is the, the good thing of me, I guess, being a filmmaker and then having a company that works for films. It's like, I know what's gonna happen before they tell the vendors, but since I am a vendor, I have the insider stuff. Sometimes my day consists of me getting off and going, if somebody doesn't come in overnight, um, which sucks, I go and I jump in. Do I be tired the next day? I shall do, but I will not let my company fail. That's not, it's not a given. I will let that movie and that production report that they wait on, they'll be then got that 17 hours later because I want to make sure that the, I want to, my company comes first. Because I saw a post on Instagram, it's like, if you die today, they're going to post your job position the next day. And I'll be sitting there and I'll be like, they show will Jesus. So they're going to get this report when they get it. But it's, that's, it's just making sure that everything is, is able to flow the way that it is and we're not missing any steps. And I don't want to seem like it's micromanaging, but sometimes I just be, I be worried because I'm a minority business owner and I'm a minority working on a film. So I have to work even harder than the next person does. And they be hating, but it's okay, they can hate. I'll chime in, um, a typical day. A typical day for me uh, looks like feeding my spirit first. That's been something that I've been very intentional about over the last uh, several months. And I really encourage other people to do that. And what feeding my spirit looks like is a uh, two to three mile walk slash run. Um, but it's, but, but the, the, the calories and the weight loss is actually secondary. It's really to just spend that time with myself and these Beats by Dre headphones, shout out to them. They don't pay me, but shout out to them. Um, and this morning walk playlist that I get into uh, filled with Frankie Beverly and Mays, Michael Jackson, Luther Vandross, uh, basically feel good music, right? And so I'm up at five in the morning, just never too much, never too much. And my spirit is being filled, okay? And it's really hard. I, I, I say this a lot, uh, quite often in the last couple months. It's hard to have a bad day when you feed your spirit first. When you feed your spirit first, it's very hard to have a bad day. 
So that's the beginning of the day. And then I go back home, I take a shower, and then I start drinking. I have a French 75 or a mimosa because that's my business. Shout out to Auntie Tab. And then I get to work at, you know, maybe eight, nine, 10. Um, but after I've fed my spirit, burned some calories, took a bomb shower, spent some time with myself, maybe did a little bit of reading, and then comes the, the regular work day. And the regular work day looks like uh, answering emails, uh, editing, maybe shooting that particular day. Um, I can do a lot uh, within my home, but I absolutely love uh, popping up at my many offices around the city. And I call my, uh, these different uh, coffee shops and, and bars and et cetera. Those are my offices. <laughs> so yeah, that's the typical day. So a typical day for me, especially since the pandemic, um, I am still an active artist. I sing, I sing background. I do, I'm doing a lot of singing while also running Young Stars right now. So like today, I had to do pre-recording. So right before uh, our Zoom call, I just left a pre-recording that I was at since 9.30 this morning. So <clears throat> typically, that's just my day, you know. I'll have like, I'll wake up early. I wake up early every morning. And so I'll listen to, I'll listen to like, basically like Christian music, just to kind of center myself, just to kind of read like my devotion, because I really just need to be poured into sometimes, because I do a lot of pouring out, you know, especially when you teach teenagers, and when, you know, they have a lot of baggage, they come with a lot of stuff, especially if they feel comfortable, so they talk, you know, so it's just, it's a lot of pouring out, I do so, like, sometimes I just sit in my room, and I'm just like, you know, reading my devotions, just kind of like, just sitting, and not me just being, you know, before I have to get up, because I have a I'm working on my time management skills. So if I have to be somewhere at 12, I need to be out of my bed at like 8.45. You know, <laughs> I need to get up and at it. Like, come on, get up and at it. But um, typically that's how my day is. Sometimes like a lot of singing, you know, and then I'll do my lessons and then I'll probably have meetings. But um, I find myself journaling a lot. Like that's where like whatever dream comes to mind, like I'll write it down. I do that a lot like a lot of goals, like where do I see why is, where do I see Young Stars being in five years? Who do I want it to be in five years? I do a lot of that, a lot of that. And right now, because it's, it's a small business, like I kind of have, I can manage it as much as I can, but like in three years, you know, I kind of want to take a step back and let Young Stars kind of operate on its own, you know, without me being such like that mama, that mama bear. <laughs> Uh, my typical day, because, you know, we are here in my job. So my typical day, I actually do college completion advising. So I am getting people to get what get their lives. Um, but post work, so like before I start work, um, same as Dr. Devante, wake up. Um, now I ride my bikes in the morning. So I bought a bike. I was that COVIDer who bought a bike. Um, it was a mission, but I bought one. Ooh never going to Covington again, but hey. Um, so I ride my bike in the morning and I listen to podcasts. Right now I'm into Christian streaming podcasts. Um, now that, you know, First Lady and Michelle Obama podcast come out, we'll definitely add that in, but definitely trying to get the spirit right. I live right on the lake. Um, so I ride the bike out there and just clear my mind before I get ready for work and all of that. Then I go do work. So then I, you know, meet with students, whatever and whatnot. In between students, if I have an order, then I'll start. Um, my order just kind of like seeing like, all right, do I have everything to make chocolate chip cookies? Um, so I know my mother said, you should always have everything in your house to make chocolate chip cookies. Um, so I can always make that. But just making sure I have everything that I need. Then, you know, as, as the day ends, um, then complete the order. Um, and just kind of like, you know, start thinking about different things to do. The other day I was sitting on my couch and I'm like, what is another thing we're going to do for OSHA? How are we going to market? How are we going to think about this? Um, and I actually launched like a cookie in a mix jar. Um, so having that as something else and just trying to think ahead um, and just kind of being like, what, what am I doing? What would I like to do for this week? Um, and set weekly goals that I try to have um, would be a general like business day um, in business of like working in personal actual work work um and then 
also work. So with COVID, it's been a little easier um, baking, doing business. So if I wasn't, if COVID never happened, would be beautiful. But if it was regular life, um, wouldn't do my nine to five, then come home and do all of that. But I think COVID allows me a little bit more flexibility, flexibility um, to immerse myself a little bit more uh, do my business. And I realize now that we're recording this on Zoom paid for by our job. So <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> we have time for two more questions because I promised you guys that we will be done by seven. So we have time for two more questions. So Logan is going to ask the next question. All right, guys. So the next question is, what are some of the mistakes you wish you could have avoided when you started your business? Take a class in business. <laughs> okay, let me tell you, it's been try and error. <laughs> I've had to mess up a lot of times, you know, and I feel like that's kind of like my biggest lessons. But I wish I would have took a took you know a business class in school just to kind of know the technicalities, so I wouldn't have made the mistakes. But I felt like for a long time I was kind of running young stars like a mom and pop business, like. Oh, if I say tuition is due on the first and third lesson, if you give it to me on the fifth lesson, it's okay. But no, it's not okay. It's not okay. Tuition is due on the first and third lesson. You know, it is in writing, it is paperwork, you know, we need that. It's just, I wish I would have taken a class just to kind of prepare me. At least I could be like three steps ahead. You know, I started from the bottom and now I'm here. Thank you, but it's been, it was rough. <laughs> yeah, I'll chime in uh, and I'll piggyback on that. Um, I definitely would say uh, some of the big mistakes were just uh, the growing pains of being the first one uh, that I know uh, to kind of embark on what I was doing, not really having anybody to pour into or to, to, or to pour into me to look up to. Um, and thankfully, I started, uh, I did a couple of uh, mentorship uh, programs coming along. That's why, that's also one of the big uh, parts of my business, uh, the mentorship, uh, particularly as it relates to um, uh, building a uh, photography business, but also just like a business consulting kind of situation. Um, because of all the pitfalls that I went through, I'm really mindful about trying to help prevent other people from those same things and like I said earlier that I shared with you guys uh, coming from pharmacy I had the money and the time working that seven on seven off to invest in myself um, and a lot of people are not uh, blessed with either of those and so I make a job I, I put the job on myself to make sure I'm helping them save that money and save that time that I you know because those were very expensive uh, mistakes that I made doing stuff uh, wrong the first time and the second time and having to redo them, uh, buying certain things, um, not investing in the quality stuff the first time, right? Uh, how many times have we went with the cheaper option only to, you know, look at ourselves crazy and say, damn, I wish I would have bought the one that was three times this, this price because it's quality. I know it's quality and I wouldn't have these issues. And now, the, the one that's a, a third of the price, I had to buy two times anyway, right? <laughs> so, and, and it's still, and I still don't get the quality of the, of, of the good one, you know? So it's, uh, it's a matter of uh, being able to coach people and tell people, hey, you know, well, here's where I made this mistake, you should do this. Um, because the third time around, this is what I did. So I can save you that first two times, you know, by telling you, hey, this is the one, this is the one that works. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, one final question, if you guys can wrap it up in about a minute. What advice would you give to someone who wants to start their own business? I would say, Go ahead. Go ahead. I would say write it out, do your business plan, you know, but also a lot of times people do a lot of thinking, they overthink it and they think themselves out of business businesses so i would say don't spend too much time write your business plan out and then start really researching it and what you can do don't over don't overthink it don't talk yourself out of it um 
if there are things that you don't know, you will figure it out. Yes, there'll be some sacrifices that'll have to be made, but you know, that's all a part of the journey. I wish I could have taken a business class. I would have probably saved thousands, but don't worry about that. You gonna, you'll gonna you cross that bridge when you get to it. Um, another big thing is make sure your heart is in it. Make sure you're passionate about it because that's the thing that's gonna sustain you. If you're literally in anything uh, just for the money, sorry i got news for you it's never worth it <laughs> it's never going to be worth it but if your heart is in it if your soul is in it if your spirit is in it um you'll be fine you'll you'll figure it out and you'll do the work and um and, and the money will come that's the beauty of it the money will come um and that goes for any and everything right because i know a, a ton of people who became doctors and lawyers and all these things uh, these prestigious careers for the very wrong reason and they are tired, they are burnt out, they're living miserable lives because they chase the paycheck and they're not even doing anything that's fulfilling for them. So yeah, make sure it's fulfilling. Fulfillment. I also would say, um, like you said, just do it, you know, once don't don't overthink it because once you overthink something that's like beyond you, you know, you you can oh you can think yourself out of it. I would just say, you know, once you write it down, once you kind of like pray on it, like just do it, just just really do it, and understand that it is not it is not all glitz and glam. It is not. It won't be. You know, especially in the first five years, it will not be, and you probably won't reap the benefits until maybe the third or fourth year. You know, and I don't want. To, I, I don't think you should become discouraged. I don't think you should feel like, damn, I'm not doing anything. Like, it's not doing anything, you know. In order for you to be here, you have to get this. You have to be You have to be the janitor. You have to be the secretary. You have to be the, you have to be these person, this person just to be here. So, you know, go through that process. And I guarantee you, it's going to happen for you. I promise you. <laughs> Thank I would you. also say, oh, go ahead, Kiosh, I'm sorry. Gosh, I forgot about sorry. it. Uh, I would also say, ask questions. Um, my mother, who is a light, obviously a light in my life, right, always says closed mouths don't get fed. Um, and I took a business, I actually started college as a business major. Um, I took one class and was like, this ain't it for me. Changed it up. But I also learned from that business class, the first thing she said is, I can't tell you if you don't ask me. Um, and I just remember when I first started asking my bit, like first started looking into body, like my business, wrote it down, had a business plan. I started to like message people that I knew and be like, hey, how did you do this? How do you do that? Like just getting information. How do you get an LLC? Do you have a business account? Do you have a bank account? Like what kind of bank account? Where'd you go? Um, just to start doing my own research. So it was pointed. Um, so I would definitely say ask questions root for your own home team to all your friends to all your friends and to all their friends um because there might be short circles um and you might be able to make connections you never thought you would be able to make because your friends won't be able to know if like you don't tell them you know if you tell them everything else you can at least tell them you're starting a business so they could circulate that you have a business and they might be able to put you in the right place with the right person um and be able to have all these you know other different things and even if you don't tell your friends put it out there you got to put it out there into the universe um and let people know share it on your own page bother people because we all see not even bother people just enlighten people on what it is that you do um so that it also is spoken out there in the universe like i said from the beginning people believe in you if you believe in yourself and if you don't believe in your product like how can i be like yeah there's this one girl she does this one thing you know, but if you're like, man, I had these cookies and they were amazing. Go check her out. Boom. There it is. I mean, my cookies are amazing, but um, they are, uh, but you know, believe in yourself, ask questions, believe in your circle um, and speak it into the universe. Um, and then, you know, to be all religious because it's a Wednesday, pray over your own business. Uh, so that as well. Thank you guys so much. And just so you guys know, I get to be a taste tester for Kiosha's um, cookies and brownies, and they're amazing. My waistline doesn't like me, but it is what it is. Um, 
Thank you guys so much. Um, I, I have gotten so much out of today's meetup event. I want everybody to go ahead, drop an email address in the chat, um, whether you are a professional or one of our guests, drop your email address in the chat. We're gonna use that to follow up with you just to find out you know, what information you need. Just so you guys know, just to give you a little bit about Trellis, um, we do have programs that are available that can fit your needs if you are interested or if you know someone who is interested in becoming an entrepreneur. We do have associate degrees in general studies with uh, specializations in both business as well as transforming the customer experience as well as an associate of arts in healthcare management. Those funnel directly into Bachelor of Arts programs in communications, um, in um, management um, that have specializations in logistics and operations and insurance services as well as well as public administration and then we also have that Bachelor of Arts in Healthcare Management so if you or someone you know may be interested in pursuing a degree where you can take a competency it is competency based learning so there are no tests or exams or lectures it is all project based and you can continue working on those projects until you master them so you can't ever fail anything that you work on um, and there are, like Rayan talked about, she wished she had taken something in, in related to business and learning about marketing plans. One of the projects that students in the business program work on is creating a marketing plan. Um, and so it is very affordable. Tuition is only $18.33 per trimester. And if you are eligible for the full amount of Pell Grant, Pell can completely cover your costs. We do have scholarship opportunities that are available. Myself, along with our admissions coach, Deanna, we meet with people one-on-one -on -one to take them through the admissions and financial aid process. And again, once you are enrolled, our um, college completion advisor, Kiyosha, will make sure you're staying on track to completing a degree. And then Logan will also meet with you to make sure that you are what we like to call career ready, um, taking you through things like resume building, cover letter building, and making sure that you have the tools necessary to be a successful entrepreneur. We are so excited that you joined with us today. We want you to follow us on social media. We are on Facebook as Trellis, on Instagram and Twitter as uh, Trellis underscore Nola. And we recently joined Snapchat as well as TikTok. So be on the lookout for some videos that we have coming up soon. And we want you to check out our website at www.trellisnola.org. Logan? Yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody once again for taking the time out your day to share some amazing information. I mean, that that was a really great. Um, I'm glad that everybody uh, stayed on and was able to kind of get that information as well. Those little nuggets. I mean, those are like very, very special. Um, so thank you once again. Like uh, Renee mentioned, uh, this is a brand new program and we're trying to get the word out to people. So if you know friends, if you know families, you talked about talking about your business, but mention Trellis to them as well. So Trellis, NOLA, make sure you kind of mention that to people because like I said, it's a great program. Uh, it's competency-based. Um, Pale Grant will, will cover your tuition. I know I'm still paying loans. I know a lot of people on this call are still paying loans as well. So if this is an opportunity for students to get the degree that they need, get the skills that you need. I know oftentimes when we are in college, we learn about a lot of different things. And I wouldn't say it was a bad thing because I'm more well-rounded for it, but some of the skills I had to acquire on the actual job, meaning these kids can get these skills prior to them actually graduating. So they'll be career ready when they get there. So some of those transferable skills that you learn, they'll actually have those skills prior to actually graduating. So learn about more about Trellis. Uh, Terry, one of our workers as well, put some of the information in the chat. So check that out. And uh, thank you once again, I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again. Have a wonderful night. Um, and we look forward to speaking with you guys soon. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.